Well, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Steve as well as all of you guys for being here. This is a wonderful experience. Uh, when, I, when, when I first really got started in photography, uh, I mean, I first started off in high school and as a being a photographer for the paper. But when I really started getting serious, I joined a camera club in the Chicago area. And that sense of community that I had when I belonged to that was wonderful. Because <laughs> there was just a good variety of experienced people and inexperienced people. And you know, every month you got together for the, or you got together weekly, but you had competitions. And that's something that uh, was a great time of my life. And unfortunately, when I moved and uh, got a job and went to graduate school, my photography kind of went to the side. And I missed that community. Um, and so, and I really haven't had that. I've kind of gotten a little bit on the internet lately with large format groups and whatnot. But being here with all of you kind of brings that back. It's nice to see other people's work. Uh, and it's very humbling. You, you guys are great photographers. And I don't, I don't know that there's not a lot of large format photographers in Austin, Texas. Uh, not a so, lot in Texas altogether. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True that. So this is this is a, a wonderful experience for, for me to be here, and, and thank you all for it. What you're seeing here um, is a good sample of my work for the for over 40 years. I've been photographing that since 1972. Uh, there's 35 millimeter in here. There's four by five, and there's eight by ten. Uh, and there's stuff from 1978. Through 2018, I've got pictures from New Mexico, Texas, Kansas, Michigan, Upper uh, Lake Superior, uh, Canadian side, uh, Nova Scotia, so all around the country, uh, or all around, and like I said, all sorts of formats. Uh, but. I love photography. I love everything about light and doing things. And yes, this is cityscape and landscape primarily, but I do also portraits. I love doing portraits. And I, I will do anything. And I would, I'd like to start doing more platinum plating. I've done a little bit. I'd love to do wet plating sometime. I'd just like to try everything. I wish that, and I certainly want to try carbon, you know. Uh, but I haven't found anything that says, oh yeah, I should do this forever. But anyways, um, I just find stuff that speaks to me and, and photograph it. And the thing that I love about photography is that you're capturing a moment in time that will never exist again. If you go back to that same place, it's not the same place. The place has changed, you've changed, so it's always changing. And then, of course, the other thing is it's my interpretation of that time, because that's not how it really was. But that's, again, that's what I like about it. I'm, I'm capturing something in time. Uh, and I can, and a lot of these I can tell you what was happening back when I took these pictures. Because, you know, they just kind of stay with you. Um, so I, I really don't want to go over each picture. You know, if you have a question about one of them, that's fine. But uh, I just, I'm happy to be able to come here and uh, present my work. And, uh, Show it to all you guys. Yes, sir. The the image, uh, the fifth image here in the snow. Yes, sir. What I was trying to figure what a light source was. This a full moon? Was this daytime? Nighttime? This, this was uh, no. This is uh, Door County, Wisconsin. Uh, I was with the camera club, and we at that original. That was the the first time I took. This was one back here. Uh, this is one of those times when you you pick a picture out and you you visualize it. It has never happened to me very often, but this is one of the few times where, when I took the picture, it came out like I thought it would, or I hoped it would. <laughs> and we were talking about going back to Door County for the winter, and it's like, we gotta go back here. And we are fortunate that, no, that's sun, sun. and uh, it's a uh, red filter, and uh, I couldn't tell you what film or anything, but that's 35 millimeter, one of the few. But I think I got 335s up there. Mm -hmm.
I was, yes, sir. I was telling you while we were talking that you know I do a lot of doorways myself. I didn't show any of them, but I have a picture that's very much similar to the one you're standing in front of. And in both your picture and my picture, the thing to me that makes the photograph interesting is that little shadow going down the steps. Mm -hmm. If it weren't there, it'd be, yeah, that's a nice picture, but that little kind of detail, you know, that's a little bit different, that you had to be there at the right time for the light to cause that to occur, goes back to what you're saying, it'll never be the same again. That's what I think makes that, you know, picture. Yeah, right. I, I, to me, it's like you said, it's that cross lighting, this cross so you're those, getting the highlights here, you right. know, the highlights, and then of course you got the nice blacks up in here. And then you got those little um, squiggly things going. Yeah, yeah. it. it uh, yeah. I do have. I, I have a thing for churches, and so do I. Strange thing for a Jew, but <laughs> I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm drawn. I'm drawn to them. I take a lot of pictures. Yeah, but there, there's something about the architecture there and, is. and how they differ. <laughs> uh, and that, and, and then old things, you know, it's like the the windows there and the uh, peeling paint, you know. Yeah. I'm just attracted to them. And then, uh, and then, of course, forms, like the forms of the mall there. And then some of my favorite, the, the highways there, the viaducts and the bridges. Well, that, that other one, a couple down, that church, is a yeah. beauty. that's a beauty. Yeah, that, it's one of those where, yeah, if, I guess if uh, in today's world with Photoshop, you'd probably put in more clouds and do stuff here and make it look more magnificent. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it was then, you know. And are you familiar with painting Alan Potter? With who? Alan Potter. Mm -hmm. Alan Potter. I am not. Um, she painted a church. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a church in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if it's famous for that area, but you know, something we found. It's, it looks pristine, absolutely pristine, but I would imagine it's not, it's not that new one. No, no, it's not no, it's normal. Yeah. Well, it's hard to photograph a whole church these days without other artifacts around it, the telephone wires and things. It's very tough to find them isolated. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it, to me, it reminded me a little bit of, of uh, the church at Ansel Adams had right. And of course, Ansel had got up on, on the top of his car, and then there was the road meeting up. Right. But this church, like you said, there's no electrical wires, there's no big roads. It, it was in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I think there was a cemetery next to it. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the lighting was just gorgeous for it. Um, Michael? Yes, sir. Um, this one behind Steve. Yeah. Are these Great silos? Yes, or, they are. And is that is that in Texas? That's in Kansas. Kansas? Um, I, I, I love what's going on there with the, the interaction of the light and the way that you've... That is, I've been working with Steve for, well, it's going to be close to a year come the summer. And um, I should preface, you know, I had, you know, I'd uh, gotten into photography and in and, and, Early 2000s, I went full contact print at an 8x10 and 8x20. Uh, but I still had kids, and it was, you know, young kids, and it, it's tough <laughs> to be a photographer and to do this. You know, I was I was doing photography 24, and I lived in a dark room, and I loved it. But after you get married and you have kids, it, you. I just couldn't expo I mean, couldn't go in there without feeling guilty, you know. So I kind of got put to the side, and then you know, I, I would do, I would work in patches, you know, and then <sighs> digital got more popular, and, and then I just talked myself out of it. And I said, you know what? It's going to be a lot easier with digital. I can get on the computer anytime I want and work on a picture. I won't have to develop. I won't have to worry about printing. I just, I sold everything. The biggest mistake of my life. I don't have a lot of regrets in my life. That is definitely the, probably one of the biggest ones. Got rid of everything. Went digital. I didn't. I think I can count on one hand the number of prints I've made since 2012 with a digital camera. Mm -hmm. All right. It's sad. I have some nice prints. I got some great shots. I hate working with digital. 
So in 2018, January 2018, I decided I'm coming back to analog. I bought everything back. That's expensive shit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my wife said, you are not having a dark room in this house. We had it in our garage. So you're, you're going to have to find somewhere else. So all right. So that was the, the one down, not a big downside. But yeah, I came back to analog. And the first time, I'm running a dark room, and the first time I went in there, the smell. <laughs> I was home. Uh, you know, you, you get in a dark room, I don't know, I play music when I'm in there, and I get, you know, yes, it's more time consuming. Yes, it's a pain because, you know, with, with the digital, you see it immediately, but with, it takes time to do this. But I feel like when I do one of these prints, I did it. it that's me. And every, I mean, everything in here, I mean, I, even, I framed them, I matted them. I, 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 the whole thing. Uh, so it's been wonderful coming back to uh, the analog world. I don't want to downplay, I still like digital, I still shoot occasionally with digital, um, but I, I much prefer working with this. And one of the things that I've gotten from Steve is split toning. And so uh, the, the Kansas silo and I, I just loved the way that they came out. It was so creamy and, and with the split for me. I'm still trying to get it down because it hasn't been consistent for me. Um, but it's such a one, it gives you such a nice texture <coughs> and tone to it. Well, that one over there, I mean, you can, it's, it's like you can actually grab it and, and yeah. peel the paint off that's already peeling. <laughs> And, and some of that is the 8x10, too. Well, yeah, that, that, but, that's a contact print. But there's something about it. But yeah, Is the, that from the split toning? I think so. I think the split toning really does help um, give it some teeth. Process aside, I, I, I think you've got some really mature imagery in, in what you choose to photograph <coughs> and where you choose to grow photograph. There's such fluidity and, and movement in these images. And, you know, we started out with, a, I start out with composition and how we, we moved on from that real quickly with your eye, so don't, don't be bashful about uh, taking credit for what you, what you put and where you put it in the frame. You know, but one thing also I wanted to say, because I asked you about this, and you know, there's a lot of 8x10 photographers here, and, and, and even larger, and I, I mean, I really, I mean, it's incredible work that you do, but I think what you're showing is that you know, you can make a really great photograph with any kind of camera that you have. Yeah, that 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 one right in the middle is 35 millimeter negative. That little little fragment of that doorway. It's a beautiful photograph. You know, and There's, and I'm not sure if if you had said to somebody, well, you know, it's a 35 millimeter. Phone. No, I don't think anybody would have thought any different. It's part yeah. of this whole group of photographs. Yeah, no, I it, I agree with you and. This one here, um, yeah, traveling with my camera all the time, I was traveling from Chicago to Southern Illinois for something, and I saw this abandoned, and it was a cloudy day. I was like, oh, I'm gonna pull over and check it out. And that was on the door, and then inside the house <clears throat> was a piano, and it was just busted up. And, uh, and then it, there was a little thing across, it was an upright, and it said, World Sir, you know, in Chicago, blah, 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 on the dates, a year, or whatever, and then it said, last forever, you know, and it had this, and I took a picture of that, and it, it's a gorgeous picture, and the only reason why I didn't bring it is because I had an air bubble that's in part of that, in the upper left-hand corner, and I, it's one of those things, but okay, I'll accept it because of what it is, but I just like, eh, it's not perfect. So I didn't bring it here, but it would, to me it's, it is, it goes right with this, because again, it's the tones and, and how good it came out, I was very proud of. It's just one of those unfortunate things, especially when you're first getting out, is that damn air bubbles. Well, the question is, why, why were you drawn to the donut? Um, <laughs> the, That's what I want to know, why? The thing that drew me to the doorknob was the kind, much like what drew me to this here. That was my next question. 
is okay. it's the texture of the paint that's there and and then the tonalities you have between the, the white yeah. and the dark. What and caused that to happen? What's the, what's the mental uh, function that's going on? Well, it's a portal also. I mean, it's, it's a symbol of something that you can you need to get to the other side. I, I find that the more I think when I try to take a picture, the worse the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> But I think the other thing that the other thing that you're showing is that, there, and we've seen it in some of these photographs, is that there's so many people that drive by the same thing or walk by the same thing, and they don't see what's there, and because they don't open their mind's eye or they don't open their heart to seeing it, and if if they if they would just slow down a little bit. And, and these are photographers, even. Uh, well, uh, some of the most beautiful and interesting things are just there. You walk past it every day. You walk you past notice, it. You don't notice it. Yeah, you walk past I don't, it. I don't want to sound like I'm dumping on the digital world, but I think one of the problems with digital photography, you know, there's, again, pluses, minus, but is that you can take so many damn pictures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do you go through all those pictures? Well, that's that's. I mean, you if you took 500 pictures, which is not uncommon, if you go out for an afternoon or something. I mean, and you do the spray ship technique. How do you? How can you give the attention that each of those pictures deserve for you to dissect and say, okay, what, what you know? I, I, I mean, and that, I mean that's another reason why I just didn't do it. It's so paralyzing, and that's what I love about large format. It's, it makes me slow down and say, okay, I'm going to take a picture here. You know, so I've got only maybe five negatives to look at instead of 500. And I've heard other people say, yeah, when I went to large format, my print ratio, acceptance rate has grown because they're not doing that. Um, you know, I was thinking about what JB said about, you know, think something, think about why you did it. And I'm putting myself in that position when I'm all alone in my dark room and I'm not, I don't have to verbalize. I'm not really thinking. Something I wanted to say when I was putting my own work up, there's a, there's a fellow that, um, just, not many people know the name, but the name Paul Turnbull was, hmm. he was a director at, uh, at a school in, in um, oh, Massachusetts and he was just revered by his students, like he was a, a Dalai Lama almost. And so he had a show in, in Vermont and I went up to it uh, and there was a crowd all around him and whatnot. And he saw me walk in. He said, don't you go anywhere. He said, I want, I want to talk to you later. So anyways, the crowd disperses. And he said something to me I have never forgotten. He said, I want you to go around the room. He said, I want you to tell me what print you think is important. And it's, I said to myself, I never thought about my work as what print's important. So I just kind of never forgot that. Just, but you know, back to your point. Um, a lot of times, it's like the silo. Uh, I, I had gone, this tri it was a trip uh, up to Nebraska, Kansas, uh, and I had time off, and I just wanted, I, my daughter went to school at the University of Kansas, so I've been up there many times, but never really had a chance. I, of course, when she was going to school, I didn't have large, my large format at that time. I like, but I saw opportunities, and I was like, I want to go back up there and get something. And so, yeah. The sun was coming up, and it had been up for about 30 minutes when I first saw that. So I pull over, pull in there, and start setting up, and that's what attracted to me. It was the light, and I also have, you know, have this attraction for things out in the country, and silos and farm, barns and things like that. Um, and you know, same with here. It was just being the old house and the, the paint. It was between the light and the texture. That's what drew me to it. Uh, whereas with the, the bridges, it was more and more the, the form itself. And I think the thing that really makes this picture come alive is the toning of it and making it. Whereas the mall pictures, um, to me, it's, it's a combination of the, the lighting with the, the forms itself. Um, uh, the, uh, 
the one, the dark one with the storm. I love storms. Of course, large format cameras and storms usually don't go well together. <laughs> um, like. But that's what yeah drew me there. It's Lake Superior um, and the, the dark clouds and yeah, um, kind of ominous. What's your music? What do you listen to? I have a wide range of music. In your dark room? Yeah, uh, my dark room. It'll be anything from rock, usually classic rock, to what's ever going on now, um, and then uh, blues. And I'm a huge Keith Jarrett fan. Uh, and uh, are Keith Jarrett fans in here? Oh yeah. Okay. What? No funk? Huh? No funk. No funk. The Cologne concert. The Cologne. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the story behind that? No. Uh, I'm good. I just heard this the other day in a book that I was reading. Um, the concert was set up to go at midnight, or right before midnight. And it was done by, organized by a 17-year-old, 18-year-old German girl. And she tried to get everything that he asked for. He showed up a few hours before, tried the piano out. Piano was horribly out of shape. First of all, it was the wrong size. It was too small. And it was out of tune. The, on the lower end, particularly, and I think maybe some of the higher end notes were just horrible. <coughs> they tried to tune it, they couldn't do anything. He says, That's it, I'm out of here. And he starts leaving. Well, you know, this girl's just like she's forward. She goes chasing after him. He's in his car. Goes, she begs him, Please, please come and do the concert. I don't want to disappoint people. So he says, Okay, I'm doing this for you. He and um, his agent recorded the concert because they wanted to show other people what happens when you don't give the right instrument. It was going to be horrible. Well, Keith Jarrett is such a great musician that he was able to pull and push that piano in ways that was not possible. And he had to, he had to physically pound the keys harder and play different types of, that he, because he couldn't go to these other areas, he had, to, he had to do some other things. And it is the most popular uh, jazz, or actually the most popular piano solo music ever. So something that was a tragedy became one of the most best-selling albums of all time. Center and he was doing improvisation. He got so wrapped up in it that he actually crawled into the piano and started plucking the strings with his fingers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm like I said, and he, it, they said I, he moans in this, and they, uh, the yeah. one person says he's moaning because he's so upset as what's happening and the, and the work that he's having to do. Um, well, he was in tune. He must have transposed a lot. Yeah, uh, he fly. Yeah, yeah. it is perfectly in tune. Yeah, but, like I said. Anyway, I just need to do a segue back to you to doing yes. the, the shadow. Uh, it's such a rich uh, contrast. Singing lines. It's just, it's just such a beautiful organ. That is my favorite picture. I I love that that dunes. Um, yeah, the early morning and. Uh, yeah, Where was that made? This one here. Yeah. Uh, this is in Colorado, the, 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 the dudes that, that are up there. Yeah. Um, 